Hello and welcome. Today's date comes in that of the seventh day of December 2020. My name is Derek. This is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and of the like within each his own risk and their own reward. Okay. Uh, this is an outside day to say the least, an outside of the last few days, really. An outside day is when the intraday high is well, higher than the previous one, and the low was lower, and in most certainly by far, that being the case today. In doing so, closing, uh, it's 3.16 p.m. as I'm doing it, so it's safe to say the close will be in around this number, at around 24.58, or around the upper end of this range as the 18 average of highs area, and sideways for the most part. I mean, it's rising, but it was declining in here. It's, it's sideways. And it's been congesting at the price action, Amongst this line, in at 23.94, a significant, but not that significant, of a Fibonacci level. So, let's first take a look at the short-term intricacies for today. And what an intraday move it was. And it did so within a failed move before. And I've talked about this before. This is just some of the things that, I, that happens. And it's, I noticed this way back when. And way back when is like 12 years ago, 13, 8, 10 years ago, whatever. And I noticed it within this this market, gold, and that's because I follow these markets, but the spies and different markets like that, where before an interesting move in one direction, you'd have a failure in the opposite one. And well, here you go. There's, this is what it looks like. Three o'clock, having this little breakdown in here, and then having a bit of time in here resisting this key fib blood level. But within the 18, it just exploded through it on the 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock session. Uh, very, very big, getting past this level of resistance that it had. Now it's in the comeback level, third period down the row in the hourly, coming back to possibly where it came from. Well, they already did, actually, in that last, that case, because this intro uh, day high, uh, or this, this high in here, is exactly where we're at right now, pretty much. So it's a uh, high of 24.585. So, yeah, that's exactly it now. So we're now back to where we came from, technically not quite to the 18 average of highs, but what a spectacular move that this is looking to uh, possibly become. Uh, amongst that on the four-hour term time frame, we can see how nicely it just dipped below and above the 18 average in here. So the possibility here for resumption of what has been a fantastic uh, bull market trend. And on uh, yeah the daily time frame, that's to me, uh, just in a, I started with this, but a fantastic look. But it didn't go down to this 2086 level, which would be that of a 38.2% correction. 61.8% would have come in, at, and does come in, at $16.69. Prices can correct one of... And or two and or two ways basically price and or time so and in this situation in here you have a little bit of price time a little bit of price and all this time in here and the net price is quite frankly been quite underwhelming it did not even I mean do I even count this as a Pierce extra on the higher side I suppose I should really but not really 50% retracement, yeah, well, 50% from here to here, but, no, because 50% would be like 1886 or 1860, whatever, but still, it just didn't hit it, and even if it hit 2086, and it only does a 38.2%, the key word is only, so it did better than the only in that sense, and it has spent a long period of time from day one, really, day, yeah, day one of the move to this level and congesting at the 23.6% down move. And that's from the $11 lows back in March and these highs of near 30. That date was September the 21st. Two weeks to go until winter. So we pretty much spent the entire season just congesting at this much, much higher area because underwhelming level of sellers coming in the market. When this thing gets going and it's showing signs that it may is really what it's doing. Continuation of day number four. And what a good day number four it is of that showing strength amongst the 18 average of highs. It's kind of showing that it wants to attempt to break out. I don't know if it does or doesn't want to. I'm going to say no right now. But if I start to see this thing start to break higher, that to me is an attempt. 
right? This was an attempt back in here to get this thing going into a bull market run. That would be the next move. So if it can get a nice, a concise move north of 25 and a dozen or something like that, nice move above the 18 highs after what's like four days of strength on such. And again, the good setup on what day number four of, of such looks like. It's to me uh, just a fantastic little setup. Now, as a weekly chart goes, it's we've got a declining 18 average of highs. And, and the reason why it's declining is because we haven't been anywhere near those prices recently. This November 16th, the highest price was uh, 25 and a dozen. Then the next day, the, the next two days, the highest price was 24 and a half. And even today, the highest price is still just six cents shy of 25. But again, we're still congesting and staying within the correctionary phase. I at least, and that's not even close to it right now, I at least need to see this price action get noticeably above, uh, noticeably above the 18 highs, which to me looks like about 27, for me to say that it's attempting to regain this bull, bull market trend in what has been 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're on period number 12 of holding and staying within the 18 average of highs with this last failed move in here. Uh, what well, could be the last failed move, but again, still got to get above it. Hasn't, again, had any break because we haven't even touched this level here. If it does, then yeah, I'll be looking for a pierce extra below this point here. That's the weekly setup. On the monthly. And I've been going over this for quite some time. Years, years, years. Because the setup has been for years. And you were in this downtrend throughout the uh, first part of this, we'll say, of the last decade, 2012, 13, 14, into 2015. Not a single moment of time existed from when it broke down in December of 2012 from the 18 average of highs for it to even get above it until April of 2016. Several years went by. Lower high, lower low. Lower high, lower low. This high in here, I mean, it was matching to this one and it got by some of these so we finally got some high, a higher high end sort of but in doing such it got above the 18 it stopped the downtrend so you're looking to neutralize the situation check market succeeded with that also in a breakout above the 18 average of highs to resume what was a nice uptrend no did not do that but again because it, it actually neutralize the situation this established support from this period and this period held two more times when it retested it later it held it again down in here and then that big covid move it did it again yes it appears noticeably below it but for how long did it spend below 14 not much and then of course the whole fundamentals of buying silver all those things high premiums came in and it was right to pay the premium price it's looking like because well, it's much more expensive now than it was back when it was 18. It's really sad to say that. Yeah, silver is more expensive now at 24 and a half than it was at 18. And I mean, of course, to buy it because percentage-wise over spot, it's not as much now as it was then, but the spot price is higher. With that being said, again, let's move continue on again. This had a long, long, long period in which it corrected through time. Markets can correct one and or of two ways. So there's the price. Within it, there's a bit of time in here. But yeah, price and then time. The volatility really started to pick up in here a little bit before things got itself back going again. Because getting above the 18 average of highs, holding and staying above this area here, so you're kind of supporting this level of resistance. I mean, those, those were good signals that we had to complete the previous year of 2019 into this year. And I predicted this to be a good year, although I didn't think this doubt. I guess I can't say that because how many times have I said before, including in this video, oh, expect a failed move before the real one. Well, I did it on this time frame. So I can't say I'm surprised. 
course, for the fundamental reason. I wouldn't have expected that back in here. But anyway, throwing that part aside. 18 hour June of this month. Beautiful how it holds it. And then two convincing months to break this level of resistance. And we've had a good correctionary move. However, it's just been that of good. For if it starts breaking out, all we're going to have is barely officially hitting the 18 average, newly rising rather, the 18 average of highs. But that's just how the markets work sometimes. The fact that it didn't come down here, this is an interesting situation. I've talked about this with other markets before. The last one was uh, Theta and cryptos. Uh, one of the things that I do tend to notice or think about when these areas don't get hit and you get these major pierce above like this and you really have really bad support. I mean, really bad isn't good, of course. Really bad is not getting much. Like lean mass isn't bad. So good in a bullish level, bad in a bearish level. Then I start to think, are we looking for some sort of major dynamic move here coming soon? And I'm, gonna, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to think that here. Whether it happens or not, I mean, the market's going to do what they're going to do. But that, that, for that reason is why I'm thinking that. But I do see in here after what was red candle down and a big one, 17% down, holding that move and even a little bit more of holding it again. And we're still in that holding situation until we break out above like 26, 27. Again, 27 is where it needs to go. But it also means as it goes up to 27, it would be telling me on the monthly, well, that's, this thing is breaking out and it's uh, attempting an exitation of the 18 average of highs. So if it violates that level of resistance, and it can do so and resist it either way, meaning and go to 27, come back down to 2505 or something, and then or even where we are now, and then back higher again, that, that could easily happen. But start to get north of 27 in here you're getting clear excitation and oh yeah it's, it's yeah, good luck on this level resistance at 29 and two-thirds because it's probably not gonna it's, it's what i would deem as weak resistance when you have this type of correctionary move especially on what looks like an early stage of a big breakout run as it goes the big move as it was here to here and let's look back at markets can correct either through the absolute price or through time. There's really not much price correction in this. A whole heck of a lot of time. A little bit of volatility in here. And of course, there's got to be some price. It went from six and a quarter down to Pierce under four, but easily bought at the low four area. Well, what you could have, the spot price was easily in there at four. What you bought it at, I don't know. Some of these moments I was barely alive, some of these moments I wasn't born in the mid 1970s but this run was a long time though it came down to this in like 1974 and it didn't get out of it until like 1979 so one two three four five complete years of a long 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 sideways correction the length of the bull run was that of, well, we can see it topped in February of 74, bottoming in November of 71. So that would be one, two, a little over two years, two years and change, two and a half. A good two and a half year run, five years sideways movement, and one year up. That was the length of time for that great run. That entire run was 1980 high, start of the year basically, so it makes it easy to calculate time math now. This thing didn't get a break out until like 2003, it didn't start even attempt to start to do so until then. And it really didn't even do so until in here, so that's over 20 years until the attempt and over a quarter century until it was really able to get things going. Oh, markets can correct for a long time. Oh boy, was this ever a long amount of time. Because this was five years in itself was long. And then it spent all this time in here. A little, little higher volatility than this point. But heck, that was a pretty big run that it had before. But the key one was that second leg higher was just a year. Going from like five bucks to 50. 10x move. How do you do kind of deal. So uh, that's 
and this is of course this cup and handle a lot of people love it and it's a move up to it you're going to hear probably a lot more about it a lot of people showing some interesting charts as well but long long time correction and then it got going and right now it looks like we're in that getting going stage and it will be if we see this excitation amongst the 18 average of highs so as far as the silver is concerned, I was going to do a video based on different type of options, but I don't see any long-term options that are like under a dollar. So I was like, nah, not a big fan of it. But I think there's one, I looked at like the call options for like the end of the week. And there's some decent ones for like 10, 20 cents. I wouldn't be surprised based on what happens today. If like, like soon, and I mean five days, four days is just not is really quick, so that's like tough. But in the next like three to ten days, if we see this thing hovering in the twenty-seven and change range, that's one of my near-term predictions. I mean, whether I mean again, it's that's a tough one to take. I wouldn't take that to the bank in the sense of this weekly chart, because the weekly chart tells me there's going to be big resistance here around somewhat of resistance here at twenty-six. So I just think it's going to violate it in time too, though. But once I got to that, I was like, nah, I'm not a big fan of how some of those options are. So how do I hold my silver? How do I bet on it? 100% all physical. And when I want to buy it, I want it in the 999 form, form. I do own what they call constitutional, the old silver, mainly the Canadian because I'm in Canada. But American and a few other country coins as well. Probably about 10 to 15 other countries. 10, 10-ish or so different countries. Maybe 15, I doubt it. But... Someday I'm going to go to a flea market and I mean these days are going to take longer now and I'm just going to go on a buying spree and I might buy a bunch someday but as of now that's what I got and you put them in different places safes and as far as protection is concerned safes are good but I was watching a documentary years ago about some guy who uh, basically for better sentencing purposes he got convicted of uh well theft and he was pretty big in the game we'll say and we're talking the brick and mortar theft of taken from your house and this and that and there are two things that totally stop these people from wanting to go after you number one is the alarm system and number two are serious dogs so for an alarm system, if you have one, make sure you make sure you get a good one. Because I've even seen situations with some security ones where people could actually see videos of what you have, like all different cameras in your house. So they can actually see where your silver safes and stuff like that are. And plus what what you might be doing at nine, hey, what you might not be doing at nine to five, meaning there's nobody there maybe. And what you're doing maybe six to 12 p.m. And uh, yeah, you might get the idea where I'm referring to there. So I, I, that's a scary thing to see. So be careful on things like that. But having a good security system that if you tangibly know that that risk isn't there and it's actually a good system, hey, it could be a good idea. Also, if you want to like try to get one that looks like you got one, make sure it looks real because these people that are trying to investigate things, if they see you got one, if they see it's fraudulent they know you're trying to do it, then now, now you become targetable. But if they see that it looks real, they're, they're going to do it. And then if they see German Shepherds, and maybe and then they're the top ones, I think, but even other dogs in the nature that are, like, in the area, even just one. No. I, I got two German Shepherds. And the, you go by, you walk, they drive by, walk by, and they see them lying down somewhere in the area, and they see them, heck, they might even be barking a little bit at them, running a bit towards them. Well, you know, at that point there, they're going to know you probably don't want to come over and they're just again and they're and i love dogs and i love animals so to me it just makes more sense that way to put that together so just different strategies on things like that just something i don't go over too often but uh that's just one of them as well and uh at least i do truly believe really soon that this is going to be going sky high fly high sky high fly I, I, this is words i invented i don't even know how it goes because i i just remember saying it like sky fly high like or something like that like months ago I'm like hey that sounds cool and that's when that, that and that's like a term i would use in market prices when they have just a phenomenal like this that, like this here type thing that's that would be sky high fly 
something like that. And I think that's going to happen here pretty damn soon. And, and I don't know what, how long soon would be. I mean, somewhat like relatively in the near term. I mean, 2030, come on, it's got to be well before then. But I moved to 50. Thereafter that, at some point, I moved to like 120. And then thereafter that, well in the four figures. And then thereafter that, well north than that. I, that's what I think will happen. I mean, that's going really, I mean, there's conservative moves and then there's really aggressive moves. My very aggressive target for silver is that it will be maybe only for 10 minutes or an hour the same price as gold. I think it would be for just a flash move. I don't think you get under one and a quarter on Oh my goodness, if it's there for that long. If it were to go to one, like it would be at like one and a quarter, then like 10 minutes, 20 minutes later, it's at one. Then half hour, hour later, it's back to one and a quarter, maybe something like that. And then a few days later, it's at two or three. I don't know. It'd be sick for some sort of move like that. If it were to do that, that's my most aggressive level. But if gold's already well, well, well north of a thousand, pretty much at two, and you know it's going to keep going higher as well, I don't think that they're going to be matching up anywhere near or south at 2000 if it does match up. So that's why when I look at price targets, you know, could it hit five figures or close to it or a bit more? Because I do believe in a final price. What was the final price of gold and silver against uh, the, uh, well, how about, yeah, like Zimbabwe is somewhat recent, but uh, Germany, Weimar Republic, 1940s. Or whatever or before then, before then, whatever. Or what was it? No, it was forties. It was. I don't know. The, I don't know the year. I know it's in that area though, and I know those prices went really high. But that's why then you don't have that currency anymore. And I do believe that's going to occur within the U.S. dollar and all fiat currencies. It's going to probably take a long time to happen to get to that final number stage. But price targets. Got a little bit in here in the 36, 37 range, then 50, 120. And we have a bunch of other levels before, until then. But yeah, I do think 1,000, 10,000 when the years and decades move forward. One of my ways of thinking, and the only way I think you can get to one to one, is if there is a monstrous demand for silver to be melted for physical use. And the demand and supply becomes to a very extreme, overwhelming proportion. Because even if the demand does get to that level, I'm not going to put the chart up, but the ratio of gold to silver, heck, if it comes back to 16, holy crap, and 32, it actually hit up in here. So 32 is expected to me as a conservative ratio to go down to. Then the 16, yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, a lot of people will agree with me there. 10, that, a lot of people think that's aggressive. And I even do too as well. But 10 to 1, that's a 10x move in itself. But that's, we'll see in time what happens. But my thinking and my strategy for play is if we're going to have a world like that where the ratio goes to 1 to 1, please take several years, if not into the next decade, but at least 2028, 20 2029, 20 2030 kind of deal. But if we get to a stage where there's a major demand for silver and the ratio gets to that, that means the price, of course, would have to explode into like high four figures, five figures kind of deal. How could it not if it matches with gold? And again, it's probably because people are going to want to melt silver. Like all these, comp all these melters are melting silver because of the industrial demand. And that's probably because of major innovations combined, of course, with the depletion of the supply of silver. The combination of the two can make that go to extreme proportions. And in turn, that means a lot of silver is going to be melted. A lot of constitutional silver. A lot of, of course, your jewelry and different things like that. that I mean, a lot of that's being melted now, but I mean, that supply is going to run low, especially too, as well. And then you got like your Johnson Matthew bars and your Sunshine Mint and your Eagles and your Maples and that stuff's going to be getting melted down as well, too. My theory, and I've talked about this before, but I'm going to keep saying it over and over, here and there, different times, is that when time surpasses that, 2040, 2050, 
maybe just a decade, 10, 15 plus years post time frame. How much would something like a 2020, 2015, 2022, 2007 bar coin of this in very good condition go for compared to your everyday ounces and what not that, not that comes in that time frame? And my answer, I think you get several. You could take like a 2016 American Eagle or a 2024, 2023. I know they don't exist yet, but they should in the future because they happened before the event and there's not as many of them in existence. So my strategy is I, I never, never, I'm always going to have silver and I'll die with whatever back kind of deal. That's just the plan, no matter how old I get. But I'm going to be looking to melt or sell, get distri distribute during that time frame when the ratio is near one to one, if it gets there, or the highest levels of distribution, like the sunshine mint bars and rounds, and I limit my limit the silver. I keep as many of those silver Canadian maples that I can. That's the highest that I own. And I also bought a whole bunch of other coins that I think are so damn cool. Those all those, those ones aren't getting melted. But they could have tremendous upside value moving forward. And that, that's the plan and the thinking and the hope, I would suppose. But again, I'm going to say something I say all the time over and over again. What the market does is what the market does. All I can do is do the best I can to analyze the situation, react to events when they occur, and so on. Thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.